Well, to do that, let's... Now I'd like to talk about some of the other unique features of the Infuser PRG beyond what we've already talked about. You know, we have here on the end of the static mixer, right connected to the mix head, the remote control with the built-in RFID antenna. Now, what can the operator do with that? Well, they can control the machine right from this remote control without having to go back to the system itself. They could start with a push of one button, they can stop with a push of a button, and they can flush, a programmable flush that's been set up in the machine. One button will give them air, then solvent, then air. Now, if they were in the middle of an injection and for some reason wanted to pause without losing all the data that's been shown in the machine's collection already, all they would have to do is hit start again, and the machine would momentarily stop, hold all the values in its memory. With the push of a start button again, it would commence and complete the fill. Now, it goes beyond that. Historically, we had said to the operator what we called automatic in the past, as I say historically, would have been where we had a counter mounted on the injection machine. And each mold would have different counts. Say the small mold there took five counts. The sink basin here in front of us, let's just say, took 100 counts. The hood of the truck over there, that would take 250 counts. And what we expected the molding operator to do was to go to the machine as they approached the small mold and set the counter at five. Then when they hit start, the machine would inject five counts and then stop. The next mold, the basin here, we expected him to go over to the controller and set it to 100. Hit start, and then it would inject 100 and then stop. And then so on with the hood and, and others at 250 or whatever their numbers were. What we found though is the operator wasn't setting the counts. Often they would set a very high number beyond even what we mentioned here with a hood at 250. They would set it at a much higher number and they would then walk up to the mold, connect the gun, hit start, and then run until they felt the mold was filled, which more often than not had 10 to 20 percent more resin than was necessary to fill the mold because they were in effect running manually. They weren't taking advantage of any automatic feature. They weren't even taking advantage of the automatics that were available in the machine, that is setting the proper number in the machine, stopping automatically. They were running, defeating that counter and stopping manually. So we said, well, there's got to be a better way. And we did. We've added, as I mentioned, the RFID. Now, the RFID works in harmony with a very simple, low-cost tag. The type of tag that we use is nothing more or less than a unique number. No other tag in the world has that same number that's embedded in the memory. Kind of like your credit card. You hope nobody else has your credit card number. Well, when you swipe your card at the store, at the merchant, that number is registered to you. It makes the machine look up and say, ah, I know who that is, and I'm going to send that charge to them. Same thing here with the mold. We give this mold a unique tag. That tag then has a number that can be read on the control handle here. So when we want then to associate a tag to a mold, we simply teach it. Let me just show you how easy that is. Come over here to the PRG, and what we'll do here is we're going to, first off, select the recipe. In this case, it's the sink basin. So the sink basin recipe, the values for temperature, the values for knowing the preset vacuum level that's to be in that mold. Remember, the mold has to have its own vacuum level. We normally set that at about a negative half a bar, about 15 inches of mercury of vacuum in the cavity. Well, what we want is we want the machine, when we hit start and it's recirculating, confirming temperature, we want it to sniff in that mold and see, is the vacuum level correct? You know, often we find in production, the vacuum level in the cavity is not correct. It's very, very often that it's leaking somewhere and they don't have adequate vacuum. Hence, they get thick parts, wasting resin, having additional scrap and rework in the end product. So the infuser PRG, unique to the industry, no one else is doing it will sense the vacuum level. If it's not within the preset level that we put into the recipe, the machine stops and says, hold on a minute, you're either over or under your vacuum setting, correct? And once that's corrected, next time you hit start, it will take off accordingly. So that's into the recipe. The amount of pressure is the limit. Remember we're talking about the upper limit 
and then the flow rate, which is really what we want to manage to. We manage our process to an injection flow rate. The idea of managing the pressure is, is an elusive value. That's, that does not work. Those with limited understanding that build equipment to controls saying, well, we're going to control the pressure alone going in the mold. How many pounds of pressure does it take to start to open the mold? You know, just a square foot of static load, 144 inches, 12 by 12, one PSI is 144 pounds of lifting force. None of these molds weigh 144 pounds per square foot. So just one static load of, one PSI static load on that surface is going to start to open the mold up and then some. So we're talking fractions. Now, we'll get into the specifics of that in, in other videos here that we talk about the process and understanding the full control because under 15 inches of vacuum, we actually have about seven and a half PSI of clamping. And then we also have, you remember, the perimeter clamping forces. But what we're talking about here is we need control, and that control is we use pressure as an upper limit. And we manage our process by a flow rate. We want to put it into the mold at the same rate. And as long as all things remain the same, we'll, we'll, we'll stay underneath a limit of pressure. If something has changed, then we're going to start going over that pressure limit with machine then we want to react to that. And the PRG is smart enough, whether it be in the manual or automatic mode, that if you exceed the pressure setting, the machine stops, automatically resets its, its flow rate setting 10% lower, and then ramps up again to start the flow. And it uses that pressure limit you gave it. If it sees that pressure again, then it will stop again and reset 10% lower than that and continue to ratchet itself down. It would even ratchet itself down to zero and shut off and give you a stall timer alarm, which would insist that the operator come and flush the head and determine what really is blocking the flow. But the point being, we manage the process to flow. So we've got our vacuum levels we check. We set our flow rates, we set our pressures. The other thing we can do in the automatic mode, in the recipe, we can step it. Let's say in the beginning, we want to flow in at a rapid rate. And then after that rate, we want to take a bit of slowing down and then Right towards the end, we want to just creep and fill the last bit of resin into the mold. Well, that's all practical and very simple to do by putting in three steps into the recipe. You can have up to five steps in the recipe. So very large molds, we may flow in at 90 grams a second. And then we'll back ourselves down the last kilogram or three, four kilograms may go in at 10 grams a second just to ease the last bit of resin in. And we do that with steps in the recipe. The other thing that we can do is we could say, well, I want to begin at, oh, one and a quarter percent catalyst, but by the time I'm putting the last drop of resin in, I want it to be at, say, 1.7 percent catalyst. And so what it will do is throughout the fill, it will incrementally move the catalyst ratio up so that the last bit of resin that goes in will cure at nearly the same time the first bit of resin goes in. So we get a more even cure across, and equally as important, we expedite the, the demolding. We accelerate our speed of closing, uh, of, of, of uh, opening the mold. Hence, we weren't doing that. We would have to put the cat, all of the resin in, as the illustration there was, at one and a quarter percent, meaning that the last bit of resin going in, we would be dedicated to the gel time at one and a quarter, not at 1.7, 1.8 percent, or whatever the values you are. The point is, you can accelerate the last bit of resin. The next thing that you can set is the heater temperature. I want exactly X, typically 30, 35 degrees C. I want that to be the resin that's going into the mold, that temperature every time. Well, we put that into the recipe as well. But we're talking now about the RFID. So we want to select the sink basin. Now to select it, and I appreciate you can't see that on your screen, but what I have in front of me is the recipe selection screen. And what's blinking, which is at the top, it says sink basin. That means the sink basin recipe is the active recipe. That's the recipe the machine's paying attention to, and that's the one selected. So we're going to return, and we're going to go to RFID. Now what, again, you can't see, but I'll explain to you. It says RFID teach screen. In this screen, we have flashing the sink basin. That's the one that says, okay, you show me a tag, I'm going to read it, and then I'll associate it with the sink basin mold. So let me show you how easy that is. 